Okay. Hi, welcome to March 12th, 2020, the online Open edX remote hangout. Um, I am recording this, uh, this event. So if you do not want to be in the recording, do not unmute and say anything. Uh, we are, we have a few things on our agenda um, to start with the news about the conference. So the Open edX conference, which was scheduled for the end of May, um, has been canceled, as many things have been canceled around the world these days. Um, it, it wasn't an easy decision when we made it. It's clearly the right decision now. We are going to be looking into how to do a virtual conference. And um, Ed Zarekor, who's been heading up the conference planning, is very excited to try that out. One of the challenges with an online conference is we don't have a lot of clear conventions about what that means exactly. So it could take a number of different shapes. We're talking to people who have run these conferences to see what sort of options are possible. Uh, I think at least three out of our four announced keynoters have said that they're willing to do online um, keynotes for us. So, you know, we've already started talking to people about how to do that. Um, we had been planning to have the breakout sessions announced tomorrow, um, but we put all of that planning on hold since we don't know what shape the conference is going to take. So we don't know, are we going to have tracks, how many tracks, how many sessions. So all of that is on hold. We had a lot of great um, proposals. Um, it looked like we were going to have a, a repeat of last year's problem of how do we choose among all of this good content. <coughs> um, and in fact, today we have with us for the online meetup, um, one of the proposed lightning talks as I was going through the lightning talks and thinking about what we could do in the online meetup, even well before we had canceled the conference. Um, I had reached out to Anna and her uh, collaborators to see if they'd be willing to do an online version of their lightning talk. So we are ahead of the curve here. We're going to try out a little bit of online conference and, and see how it goes. Um, Regis is lobbing jokes at me. Um, <laughs> online juggling, sure. Online juggling, why not? Um, so that is that is the news from the conference. We're evaluating online options. If you have any experience with this or thoughts about what could work, um, for instance, one of the things that we realized is it doesn't have to all be three solid days consecutively. We could try something like for consecutive Tuesdays or shifting time zones to make it possible for everyone to attend. Ironically, by not, thanks Marco, that's not distracting at all. Um, by by uh, not having everyone come together in one place, ironically, the time zones are now more difficult. Um, so we have to sort of look through all those logistical questions and see, see what we can do with it. So get in touch. Um, if you have ideas, you can throw them into discourse. You can send them to us. Um, Open edX uh, 2020, I think, is the outward facing email to get in touch with the conference organizers. Um, we will be issuing refunds through Eventbrite once we figure out how to do that. Um, don't worry about that. We'll, you don't have to request refunds. We're going to refund, be refunding money. Uh, we just have to figure out how, because Eventbrite's already been sending us money. So we have to figure out how to get the money back to Eventbrite or straight to other people, whatever. That's, difficult, but we'll figure it out. Any questions or comments about the conference planning? Oh, and by the way, we're already talking. We already had been in talks with potential hosts for 2021. Um, and now Lisbon is a potential host for 2021. So it's entirely possible that we'll, the conference we had been planning, we will do sort of a year from when we've been planning to do it. We talked about whether to maybe do it in October, but we felt like We'd like more of a buffer from this whole situation. And May is a good time for doing academic conferences anyway. And so that's what we're talking about. But nothing is firm, firm about that yet. Um, any Can question? I put yeah. a question? Sure. Uh, about the price, this, uh, you also announced the uh, Open right. edX Prize. Thank you. That's a good point. So the, we had announced the Open edX Prize sort of as part of the conference, but it, isn't, it, it was going to be part of the conference in that we would present a physical prize and have a talk from the winner at the conference. But um, 
awarding the prize doesn't have to happen at the conference. So we are going to continue with the prize. We have a form out there for people to nominate uh, what they think is great work in the open edX world. Um, and we would love to continue to uh, promote that work and make it more widely visible to everyone around the world. So please do continue to nominate um, projects for the open edX prize. We'll figure out how to make a ceremony of it, but we don't intend to put that off. We want to continue to do that, whatever happens with the conference. Absolutely. Um, and I believe that's a pinned topic in discourse right now. If you go look at uh, discuss.openedx.org, it's um, pinned to the top. Oh, it's not pinned. I'll, I'll repin the prize talk topic. Um, and I'll put the, uh, I'll put the prize link in the in the notes for this video. Other other questions about the conference? Okay. Um, let me find my notes here. Um, so Juniper, Juniper is the next release of the open edX software um, the alpha has been out since the middle of December and there have been about a half dozen concerns raised about it about half of which of those have been resolved there are still a few open threads in discourse about juniper and issues that need to be resolved um, we are getting near the point where we're going to start the Juniper master branches, which will happen once the Django 2 work is completed, um, upgrading from Django 1.11 to Django 2.2. Um, and at that point, we will need to seriously uh, resolve issues. So the, the more we can do up front, the better off we're going to be. So if you have any spare cycles and expertise for installing software and seeing how well it's working for you, please give the Juniper Alpha a try. Take a look at some of those issues and the discourse threads. Um, and let me know what you find out. <clears throat> any any questions about Juniper? I'm I'm interested to hear, maybe at the end, uh, about people's experience with the sudden shift to online education, which is a topic that I think is probably top of mind for many of us. Maybe Peter has some experience. MIT I know has shifted to all online. Uh, after the, the break, which I guess is next week. Um, but we can cover that. You, I'll, I'll put that idea out there. You can start thinking about how you might want to tell us about that. Um, we can do that after uh, Anna's lightning talk. Um, so I had invited Anna to talk to us about her work fostering women into STEM MOOCs, which was a lightning talk that she had proposed for the conference. Um, Anna, are you ready to tell us about that? Tell us about yourself and your collaborators and whatever you've got. Okay. Okay, hello everybody. So I'm Anna. I'm uh, from Lisbon, Portugal, and I'm, uh, from, uh, I'm a faculty member of our uh, technical institute inside the Uni University of Lisbon. I'm a math teacher, mathematics, and uh, I am also the MOOC uh, coordinator at our uh, technical school you know, faculty. But no, no faculty, but the technical institute. That's the idea. And uh, so I prepared some slides. Uh, can I share this or? Yeah, I think you should be what able to. Yes, it's bad. How can I do this? Is sharing? I must uh, share screen. Okay. Yes. So, what well, I don't know what's better, the PDF or the PPT. Uh, whichever is you're more comfortable navigating through. Uh, it's so we we can see PDF, your screen. I, I'm going to scroll. Yes, and uh, yeah. Okay. Maybe. We, okay. It's so cool. Okay. So I'm. Very honored to be here and thank you for the invitation. And I'm going to uh, just give you an overview of our FOST Home project and talk a little bit very shortly about the first objective of the project, 
which we call it uh, toolkit. So my name is there, so Ana Moura Santos. Then there, uh, Paola, it's also with us. So Paola, please go ahead if you, if I need help, I will. Hi everyone, nice to meet you. <laughs> Greetings from Italy. I'll, I will jump in uh, whenever you You need will me. jump, okay. And Valeri, you are also allowed to jump. <laughs> Hi all. <laughs> So we the Italian have... girls jumping. Okay. Yes. Okay. And uh, Carlos, is, it's from Valencia, UPV. And uh, so we prepared the slides together and uh, I will go through them. So the Fostering Women uh, project is uh, this. So we want to fostering uh, younger, young, young women and girls into STEM courses. And uh, we are going to do this uh, through MOOCs. And this is a Erasmus Plus project, so very new. We had the kickoff meeting on January, so before the COVID uh, crazy things. Um, and uh, so our purpose is to use MOOCs um, for in STEM subjects that hopefully are going to be free of stereotyping, assumptions on gender abilities. So uh, one of our goals is to raise the number of uh, female students and learners uh, attending these online courses, uh, mostly in the areas of STEM. So the first um, first um, uh, members, partners are, so uh, or we already talked about uh, UPV, uh, Universitate Politecnica de Valencia. So we have our institute, it's Instituto Superior Tecnico from Lisbon, Portugal. So the colleagues from Italy are from the METID uh, of... Uh, so you have a... Maybe you present yourselves or... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, yes. You can, we can do that. We are from the uh, unit uh, which is devoted to uh, yeah. online learning at uh, Politecnico di Milano. So we are the one who use uh, Open edX for our MOOC platform, which is called the Polyme Open Knowledge. And uh, well, we have uh, quite a lot of MOOCs there, some of them in Italian, some of them in English. Okay, thank you. So we have also a partner from France, from Paris. So this Conservatoire National des Arts et Métiers. And uh, the three of us, uh, have uh, our own platform, open edX platforms. So we share also the, this in common. We produce MOOCs and we have uh, our own local and uh, customized platforms. Then the KTH uh, from Sweden, Sweden join us. And we have also two partners that are high schools. So the last two partners are uh, high schools, one in Portugal and the other in Italy. So our uh, proposal, I can uh, share this slide with you. So we intend to use this inclusive pot potential of MOOCs to propose uh, STEM subjects that are free of uh, stereotypes uh, uh, related to gender abilities. And uh, we are very interested in attracting girls and uh, young women to science in, at large. So and we are going to use MOOCs for this. So we uh, pretend to have uh, online contents with the very relevant real world situations and, uh, and at the same time with the strong conceptual frameworks like, uh, so we have already one idea of going to a MOOC for in, in intro to machine learning. So we consider uh, that using uh, good practices in videos, uh, in producing uh, multimedia contents, it's very important. And uh, this is one of our uh, aims. It's uh, to have good practices uh, to do this. So at large, our objectives are, uh, the first it's to develop a toolkit, and I will shortly uh, talk uh, about this. And then to design and produce uh, three MOOCs. So two of them, the two, uh, the two uh, in the, the second bullet, uh, they are uh, numbered. So the the two of uh, that are in this bullet are one graduate uh, MOOC um, and one bridging. So the bridging it's the for more uh, for a pu public from high schools, teachers and students. 
And then, uh, so these are going to be for uh, our responsibility at uh, Technical at Lisbon. Then Polimi will be responsible for the transversal MOOC. And in this MOOC, uh, there are going to be uh, contents that will explain how to use the toolkit. And uh, so that's it. Then we have also considered to uh, have uh, training sessions and uh, the high schools that are partners in our projects are going to be very involved in this part of the project. So I took this uh, map, so this is, uh, which gives uh, an idea of percentage of female students that are enrolled in engineering, manufacturing and construction programs in different parts of the world. So the gray parts, uh, so they don't have that data for this, but uh, you can see that uh, we don't have, uh, so the, even the most dark blue regions, so Brazil and here in uh, North Africa, they don't, um, so above, but uh, I, I will say not even close to 50%. And uh, in this uh, article, this is pro taken from Wikipedia, uh, there are sayings that, so statements that uh, say that it, even after this enrollment, the dropout, uh, the dropout uh, among girls are larger than in STEM areas, are in STEM topics, let's say. It's uh, bigger or higher than for uh, male students. So about the toolkit, so we uh, have this idea of uh, doing, of producing a toolkit, a digital toolkit that will be useful for uh, all of these stakeholders of MOOCs. So teachers, tutors that are at the same time content experts or not. So instructional designers, graphic designers and video editors. So these uh, are the technical uh, support teams for MOOCs and then uh, also, you, the you, toolkit is also meant to be uh, used or useful for the participants, students or partic participants. So the two, uh, what about the toolkit contents? So we have, so this is a, a work in progress. So we don't have the toolkit yet. So we are uh, talking only about the ideas uh, that we are going to move into this toolkit. So uh, we ha we'll have these items, so some uh, motivation and examples. So we, we are going to analyze some of our own MOOCs and see which are the good and the bad uh, examples in these MOOCs. And then we'll uh, have a, a part of the toolkit will dedicate it to documentation and the context of the, um, so the fostering uh, women to STEM things and uh, how to uh, to use the toolkits uh, in order to to self assess if the MOOC it's it's already uh, gender balanced or not the, and this is going to be done with checklists so we are thinking mostly on checklists and uh, so this evaluation checklist it's uh, one of them and the other it's for designing MOOCs then we, we also intend to have feedbacks from, from participants and even for, from MOOC uh, producers or content uh, producers. And at uh, the very end, we uh, are going, so at least we intend to develop a badge uh, system. So to give badge, badges for uh, MOOCs that uh, are well done, let's say, from the gender perspective. So the first uh, item in this toolkit, the motivation examples, I already uh, told somehow that they are going to be picked from our own MOOCs. So from technical MOOCs and from Polymy MOOCs and uh, from CNAM, CNAM it's the French uh, MOOCs. And um, so we uh, are, we see MOOCs like, like the, they are part of the problem, but at the same time they are Going, uh, they are also part of the solution for, uh, for this kind of fostering uh, in this area. So the documentation part, uh, we see it like having some references and uh, the part of the transversal MOOC will explain how to use and uh, the toolkit. 
both in the MOOC design and uh, we want to support so with some doc documentation uh, how to su successful uh, give uh, so checklists for uh, self evaluation of MOOCs from uh, this gender uh, balanced perspective. So, and then we will have a glossary for definition. So, if they someone has to uh, evaluate where about uh, uh, let's say correct language. Uh, Oh, how, what is this? Yes, so the definition, what we mean about uh, the, the language part of uh, being uh, gender balanced. So this is uh, the thing we are going to design and uh, have um, evaluation checklists. And uh, at the end, we uh, consider to have badges for uh, both to, for producer for MOOC producers and MOOC participants to give uh, some feedback. So this is like a, a feedback on a MOOC uh, from this perspective. And and you mean a badge for the MOOC, not for the learners? From the MOOC. No, so but, you have but, a checklist. So let's say the tutor uh, said uh, was taught uh, equally she and he. So he mentioned all the time. So he, he never could keep saying he or uh, you use only male example, male, uh, let's say in Portuguese, this is very strong. In English, it's, so, it's not so strong. So in English, there are these neutral uh, terminology, which is useful. But in Portuguese, even when you say hello or hi, you are already uh, putting there a uh, uh, male or female uh, solution. So these kind of things, I think we right. are going to, so uh, this is going to be part of the checklist. So the participant or even uh, some uh, tutor can evaluate uh, uh, not maybe his or her MOOC, but uh, so he just uh, enrolled and uh, run and uh, participate in the activities of the MOOC. And at the same, at the very end, the very end, you will be like uh, evalu self evaluate the MOOC uh, and then uh, have a badge to say, okay, this MOOC stands okay in this uh, gender balanced perspective. Okay, I'm um, done here. Question uh, Who gets the badge? Is it the tutor uh, who created the MOOC or the organization who's supporting the MOOC? Uh, maybe Paola can answer, but uh, okay, I, I will say uh, what I think now. I think it's the MOOC, it's uh, the, the MOOC itself, the one MOOC, so. Okay. Yeah, we, uh, uh, let's say that uh, this project is going to last three years and we just started. So this is one of the things that we are going to verify while the project is ongoing, because the intention is to assign a badge for each MOOC being developed, um, taking care of all the items uh, suggested within the toolkit. This is the idea. But uh, first of all, we are open to change slightly every next step of the project according to the development of the project itself. And also, if anyone else comes up uh, worldwide with uh, any kind of suggestion before we prepare our toolkit. Uh, in, in fact, Anna, if I if I may have a moment, uh, I just yeah. want to add one thing. Um, of course, being that all of the partner organization except high school high schools are already involved in developing MOOCs. Uh, well, actually, and being also that we are all sensitive to the balanced gender issue. Well, nobody in our institutions, and we also have been asking around and looking for literature, etc., mm -hmm. have never thought about developing this kind of uh, toolkit. And uh, it's not a problem. Uh, it's a part of the solutions that uh, you always come up with, uh, um, new ideas. But the thing is that uh, being that we are all involved in practical uh, work on MOOCs, uh, we are looking at it, uh, as you can see from the, uh, from the slides Anna showed you, that we are taking the problem into consideration from a very practical perspective. So our stress 
is on uh, giving uh, something that can support quickly different uh, uh, stakeholders involved in any design and development. And uh, also one thing that we thought and that uh, could be useful is that uh, whenever uh, a content or a teacher takes into consideration this, this uh, toolkit when, when it's going to be ready, they are also be going to be affected uh, by the content, uh, even if they are face-to-face, -face, uh, even if they are teaching elsewhere, and even if they are just writing something, you know, because uh, it's not always so immediate to think about gender issues while you write or while you think about the uh, content. And uh, actually, <laughs> starting from our analysis of uh, photos and images, oh, also... Yeah. I think already reusable materials are not so gender friendly in themselves, you know. So raising awareness about that, and we needed that first, we wanted to do that first. It's something that uh, is going to be useful also for other people, we believe. And also, being that uh, everything within this project is being developed thanks to Erasmus Plus funding from European Union, everything we are going to release will be open and reusable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And also changeable. I mean, we are waiting no, we are no, to no. receive uh, suggestions and, uh, 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 I don't know, suggestions, but also proposals for change and improvement because it's just a starting point. It can develop in something very large, I mean. Yeah, so it, I, I think it's a really interesting project because it, I mean, at the, on the face of it, it sounds kind of simple, right? But it's, yeah. as Anna mentioned, different languages, every language has yeah. this sort of all so deeply embedded. Um, you know, you say we have uh, gender neutral structures in English, but lots of people find them kind of awkward and resist them. So the more help you can give everyone with how to how to get past these things that on at first blush seem kind of simple, but are actually really, because they're so simple and ingrained, they might be really, really difficult to get over. So I think it's a really good thing to focus entirely on those, those sorts of issues. Yes, the, the idea is to give a checklist because uh, it's quick, okay? Mm -hmm. Right, it's a tool and we wanted to call it a tool because it's quick to start using it, but then, with each item in the checklist, you will have the chance to go to a glossary and all the documentation. So if you have time and you are willing to go in depth into something, you will be able to. But let's start from doing it the right way, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Taking into consideration this, yes, okay, done. Are you, are you having uh, both male and female representatives in your examples? Yes, please, okay, done. <laughs> mm -hmm. So are you choosing the proper images if you are, uh, I mean, if you're preparing the graphic design of the MOOC, are you choosing the right language if you are uh, writing the content, et cetera, et cetera? It sounds, it sounds great to me. How can people get involved or, or stay up to date as you make oh, progress? Yeah. Sorry, uh, we are late with the website. <laughs> Sorry, the last slide. <laughs> it's not the last the last one but uh, so the con please contact us so we created this gmail uh, uh, email <laughs> and uh, we also have the twitter the website unfortunately it's a little late all right but as soon as the website will be available we are going to use those channels to spread the word about it so in the meanwhile, if anyone is interested in uh, keeping being kept up to date and also join us, if you have anything like an experience that we weren't able to reach, for example, if someone uh, already started using a tool like this or uh, developing something in order to raise awareness about this issue while developing MOOC, we're more than happy to, to start from there, to include them in our uh, tool and uh, to spread the word about the, the word that it has been already done elsewhere. Great. Any, any other comments or questions from people? Yeah, I, I have uh, one more. <laughs> Do it. Um, yeah, so in one of the slides, uh, Anna mentioned um, 
something like MOOCs are part of the problem and they're also part of the solution. Oh, yes. um, so um, I'd like to know more about like uh, how they're like, I mean, is there any data to support that or how did we, uh, did we like, uh, you know, made that um, conclusion? Okay. Um... And I'm, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, sorry, go ahead. Yes, it, there is uh, not a great, uh, there, there are no, not much uh, papers or articles or, uh, or even analysis of data about this. So we are also going to, so before the toolkit, we are beginning to collect data on that. And we are going to analyze our own MOOCs, so the Polymi and MOOC Technico and the KTH uh, MOOCs and the, see there where, which, where, which are the examples and the language and the, so the, even the images, the graphics, everything. So we are going to do a pre-analysis. So before we are going to produce the toolkit or to develop the toolkit, the, uh, so by now at this moment we are collecting data, okay? okay. So, and I think we can use MOOCs as part of the problem because, oh, I guess I, I'm, I already, uh, I'm author of two MOOCs and I expect that two MOOCs to be high on gender balance because I, I gave an example. I, I'm always salutating like high or other, otherwise I will say, uh, welcome in the male and female, uh, so. And sometimes I <laughs> change. So first I say for her, for the, for the girls and then the boys. <laughs> but little things like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was lucky because books that I developed and I've been authoring, uh, I've always been working on them in English. So it was easier because oh, it's okay, no, mine are important. <laughs> Portuguese. We have a completely different formulas for male and female. But you know what? Okay. Uh, we've been talking uh, within the partnership around that because uh, being that we already have books, actually we all shared the same uh, uh, sensation that uh, even if we are sensitive to the issue, also our MOOCs are not as perfect as we would like them already. So yeah. when we are going to develop the MOOC around the toolkit, for example, one of the things that we are going to share within the MOOC in itself are examples of good practices of gender balance in uh, partnership uh, MOOCs or already existing MOOCs, but also uh, uh, examples, uh, maybe we, we need to have uh, to take care of the diplomacy on that because uh, of course, if, if you talk about your MOOCs, it's one thing. If you're talking about faculty MOOCs, it's different, but then we are going to use them in order to address problems anyway. And the toolkit will be uh, developed in order to solve all the problems that we already encounter in our shared MOOCs, okay? So we still be, we are going to start from practical examples in both cases. Sounds good. All right, thank you very much. Um, unless there are other questions <laughs> or comments. <clears throat> Um, that's all. Thank you, Anna, for jumping in. I know yeah. that it's just the beginning of the project, but we're all looking forward yeah. to, to yeah. seeing your progress. Mm -hmm. And thank um, you for the invitation, of course. <laughs> sure. So that's all I had for the formal agenda. If people have other topics, I earlier suggested that we are all in a transitional point of suddenly doing a lot more online education mm -hmm. than we thought we might be doing. I don't know if there are, anyone had any anecdotes or learnings or warnings for us as we head into these uncertain times. MIT has um, told students not to return from spring break um, and all classes will be online. I know on, uh, MIT had already been doing a great deal of online education with on-campus open edX. Uh, yeah, so, I, we just uh, told students 
that uh, they need to leave, uh, I think, Tuesday, and they're going to be away, no classes for two weeks, and then on um, uh, March 31st, all the, course, all the courses will be online. Um, two weeks for all the faculty to figure out what they're doing. Uh, uh, a couple days ago, I thought it was just going to be the, um, the 20 largest courses, uh, which <clears throat> we already have uh, much of them running in uh, Open edX, at least for problem sets uh, and most exams. Um, the final piece for those 20 was to uh, get out ahead of uh, recording video lectures. Um, and then uh, I think also figuring out how to deal with small sections, recitations. Um, uh, I think those will probably be moving to Zoom or something like that. Right. Um, but now um, we're doing uh, 1,200 courses, um, many of which I don't know anything about because they've never asked for anything to be online before. Um, so it's going to be a brave new world. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think the request has gone out to the faculty to be creative, and we're kind of waiting to hear. Um, you, have a, you have a question. How are you scaling video production for that? Everyone records their own? Uh, that is a really good question. Uh, so far, the scaling, again, we were talking about the, the 20 um, large lecture courses. Uh, we already had some infrastructure in place to do lecture capture. So um, people are going into those lecture halls when there's no students and giving a lecture. Um, uh, and then we have a couple of light boards set up around campus. Um, there's been some talk about building more of those, um, but we need to uh, find locations for them. That's actually the biggest challenge uh, for the light boards. Um, and uh, I've heard that those can be self-service once they're set up. Um, we've had some success with that. Uh, and it's a teaching mode that uh, faculty who are used to using chalkboards seem to adapt to pretty well, um, better than uh, tablets and things like that. Um, but uh, I think there's going to be a certain amount of uh, Zoom recordings. Um, and I keep asking around to see if anyone's willing to try Twitch or uh, uh, any of the uh, game streaming platforms, but uh, that hasn't come up yet. Um, I think the big challenge, there's going to be a lot of challenges, but uh, a lot of courses have a very hands-on component. You know, you've got labs, you've got uh, design courses, architecture courses, and it's just not clear yet how they're going to handle that. Um, and then I think my group is going to be very much involved with exams. Uh, so um, I think we're going to be leveraging the proctored exam infrastructure in Open edX uh, pretty soon. Yeah. And then there's some people who write their own software. <laughs> I hope it'll weeks. be open source. <laughs> Uh, well, they always have projects going on, and yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, okay. Anyone, anyone else dealing with this? You Montreal is on the line, I see. Yes, we are. Uh, what we're doing mostly are internal uh, courses are on Moodle, so. It's not a problem for our open edX uh, system, which is mostly consumer facing, but uh, it will be a combination of courses that were already in Moodle and courses that will be displayed through Zoom. But I'm not fully aware of all the detail. It's something that we started talking about yesterday. Yep. The edX offices are closed for at least the first next month. Um, so we are all elsewhere at home. Do Any you other? want to share, do you want to share your experiences of uh, working from home? It's, um, it's tricky, you know, <laughs> uh, 
remote remote online things can be less immersive than face to face obviously and today the bandwidth has been good yesterday for some reason it was much spottier mm -hmm. um but yes i imagine zoom is going to be dealing with a lot of server issues they're probably mm -hmm. scaling up like crazy yeah um so like i work at slack these days and um you know uh, luckily, I have some data, so uh, people are going crazy. Um, we're seeing some huge surges in uh, uh, number of users all across the world, especially Slack calls are getting uh, more popular. Um, and uh, yeah, in case you you know find any difficulty working from home, I guess uh, AppSembler is here, so <laughs> they, they, they can help. When you say they're here, here where? I mean, Nick was on the call, right? He, uh, and also, also. On oh, Slack. I see. Yes, he was. Yeah. Yes, but he's he's dropped. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, reach out to everyone. We should help each other with these things. Um, we have experience with online education, maybe not at quite the velocity of adoption that we're about to see. Peter's putting 1,200 courses online in two weeks or something. Um, I hope we get 1,200 customers in the next two weeks. All right. I, I, I hope you do too. Oh, and Carlos uh, it's is just a hope. I don't think it will happen, but if that happens, I'll be very happy. Right. Well, okay, if there are no other comments, thank you for all for joining. Um, we're gonna be continuing to do these monthly and we're looking for uh, interesting content. Thank you very much to, to Anna and Valeria and um, Paola for telling us about their project. I know there's interesting work going on out there in the Open edX community. Please nominate yourselves and or others for the Open edX Prize. Um, if you proposed a talk for the Open edX conference, then you could do content for our remote hangout and we would be glad to have you. So get in touch if you wanna tell us about the stuff you've been doing. Uh, other than that, stay safe out there um, and I'll see you in discourse and on Slack. Thanks all. Thank you, bye everyone. Bye everyone. And take care. <laughs> bye, ciao. Take care, yes. Take care. <laughs> oh, yes, take care. <laughs>